Hello everyone, it's Dr. Karate, Dr. Rafael Gutierrez. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm actually going to address a, a question someone posed to me online, which uh, I thought was pretty interesting, and that was if it was better to use Kibudachi or uh, Shigodachi when doing Naihanchi. Now, when I'm actually dealing with both of the, the stances, I will just say Naihanchi for simplification. They are both slightly different, and that has to do with the position of the feet. Now, I, will act, I do want to mention that uh, a lot of the things that I do in karate are actually based on what my late sensei, uh, Taba sensei, uh, taught me. And there's a big a conversation towards me that I actually had with him when the last time I saw him, which was 2012, where he, I think it was 2012, um, where he told me uh, that he always wanted to te me to teach Okinawan karate, the real, what he said, the real Okinawan karate. And I know that's something he said to a lot of people. He really believed that if he taught you, he was going to teach you the real Okinawan karate, and he hoped that you would be the type of the person who would teach how, what he you felt was important to him. But there was another thing that was interesting about him, and that's a conversation I had with him, uh, like I said, the last time I saw him, where he told me that he was teaching me his karate. It's the way he did it because of the way his body worked. But he wanted me to find my karate, use what he taught me, and teach my karate, make my karate better. He actually made a comment later on, uh, that same day I think it was, where, where he said, learn from anyone who's willing to teach you. Take whatever works for you and make sure it actually makes sense to you. And that way you can get something a little better. Uh, the uh, it was actually based, it was translated to me because I don't speak Japanese. He doesn't speak English. Now the one thing that's interesting is, as I actually look at some martial arts, a lot of times there's different ways people address, uh, approach it. Some people approach it as if this is what they're teaching. It's always what they've taught, and it doesn't matter if there's new information out. They're going to teach what they feel is right because that's what they were taught, and. That's fine, no, but know that there's more than one way to do it, and there are variations on why certain things will be done one way versus the other. Uh, it's actually interesting. In research, they, there's something called the uh, Red Queen's Race, which pretty much in evolution is every animal has to adapt because there's something else trying to catch it, and so there's constantly a change to make sure that it survives while its predators may be trying to catch it. Uh, I actually found out that in sociology, some people talk about the Red Queen's race in the fact that if you're in a certain social class, to stay in that area, you still have to, to stay in the same social class. You have to be moving at the same pace that the people who put you in that social class were to just stay. If you want to go beyond that, you have to actually run faster than what you were doing before. And so one of the things is, uh, with karate, there is actually a queen's race in there. And what I mean by that is this. Once upon a time, people look at martial art, their karate, their martial art, in a box. This is what I was taught. This is what's there. That's what I'm going to teach. And somehow someone decided, well, look, let's do tournaments so we can see what everyone's doing. Let's see what works best there. Now, with tournaments, you had a bit of consensus Judges decided what actually was the way things were done. Katas were done a certain way because those scored better. In uh, Kumite, point spar if it was point sparring, people would say, okay, these techniques count, these do not. And so karate was modified based on the tournament circle. Things changed because of what was winning. Later on, you did have some full contact fighting, and things again changed because for safety, you put, you put rules. And so certain things worked great when you were doing full contact fighting. Later on, you had the mixed martial arts type of scenarios where things started working in a mixed martial arts scenario. Now, one of the things that I will tell you is I'm not going to say one is better than the other, but what I am saying is these are all different proving grounds and each one can give you a fuller picture as you do it. Now, as I'm 46 years old, pretty much four years away from getting my AARP card, uh, I really can't do a lot of the full contact or the MMA because, well, if I get injured, I may not heal right. 
And so, you know, I, I actually can't take the hits that someone who is 18 can. So, you know, I actually have to find another way to get my karate to modify. And what I use is I use modern science. I actually use anatomy, physiology, and I also use kinesiology, especially by looking at what other people have found. And so when you look at Shugodachi, and I'm going to do it here, here in a little bit, you actually see certain things happen. Now again, remember, uh, Kubodachi, your feet are both parallel. Uh, Shikodachi, your feet are pointing a little out. Now there's a variation on how much you should come out. Every, some people have an exact number. It should be 15 degrees. Some people 30 degrees. Uh, some people say whatever feels comfortable. But the, when you're looking at this, you actually have to look at a lot of different things. One of the first things I would look at is other sports. Do any other sports use a either temporary or full-time stances like the Naihanchis? And I actually did find that if you actually, if you watch baseball sometimes, not the, not just a catcher, but actually even runners, you do have a Naihanchi-like stance, a stance of Shigodachi or Kibodachi. Usually it's more like uh, Shigodachi. If you watch uh, sumo, you'll notice that they use Shigodachi quite a bit. And then I found in weightlifting and weight training, People do use kibodachi and shigodachi, either in the deadlift or in the squat. And what I did is I went to the sites, the original research from people who are doing uh, research on the uh, squats and deadlifts in whether they use kibodachi or shibodachi. And what I found was there were so many articles and so many different uh, organizations that there were things that were different in one versus the other. Now there is actually something that was common in all. One of the first things that I actually found is there was one article that was looking at EMG in both the standing with your feet parallel or out in weightlifting, and they used EMG to determine how much of the muscle was being activated. And what they found is it didn't matter whether your feet were parallel or slightly out. Both of them activated the same amount of muscle. So the whole idea, some people will say one way is more powerful than the other. The whole idea that one is more powerful really gets thrown out the window because EMG studies are telling you they both have the same one. What is interesting, though, about that one of the studies is they also did a staggered foot formation. So what they did is one foot was out on the outside, one was a little farther back, and that one ended up having more muscle being used when he squatted than the two other ones together. There is another thing that seems to be universally agreed upon, and that is that the knee and the toes should be pointing the same direction. Uh, meaning that if your toes are going uh, at a 30 degree or 15 degree out, your knees should be pointing uh, 30 or uh, 15 degrees out. Exactly. And so that's actually one of the things that, again, was universal. And so that actually gives us a lot of different things. You know, one is both stances to this point are just as beneficial. The issue may actually be in how far wide you go or how far in you go. Most of those studies were saying either short to have your uh, hip, the feet, shoulder length apart or just slightly over or in the, uh, actually just uh, at the hip area or slightly over. And so that was it. When they actually said that if you went out too far, you could actually did, could do damage to your knees on both stances. And it does make sense, especially when I uh, show you what I'm talking about. The next thing that is actually interesting is if we're a lot of people talk about well, the stance should be support should be support. And one of the things you would ask is which stance would offer more support if your toe, toes are pointing up or out. And this one's actually one that. Some people may not necessarily understand unless you go and look at gait. What we find with gait is if you're moving your feet, if you have your legs in, more of your pressure will end up actually going to your front two areas. As they come out, you end up putting pressure on the entire, more of the uh, 
follow the foot. I'm using my hand here, but this is, would be the area. And so as you're actually coming out more with uh, Shigarachi, it seems that this would actually be a more supported stance based on the amount of points in contact with the ground. Uh, what I mean by that is if you actually look at having it straight, you tend to have the first two, which technically would be these two, but if this was a big toe, you would actually have it on these two and on the calcaneus, which would be here. If you rotate out, you end up having a little bit more on the fifth, and it spreads over a little easier. And it has to do with actually how the arc of the foot works. So again, Chigurachi seems to be more, more supportive. Now, longevity. Again, this one, that's actually another thing that would be important, is how long can you actually do this for? If you're doing damage to your knees, you will actually not be able to do the stance too long. It's one thing I mentioned in the other video. Uh, I don't have knee pain. I don't have back pain. I don't have ankle pain. Uh, occasionally, I do have back pain if I do something really stupid or ankle pain if I go running. But other than that, I'm pretty much not suffering from chronic back, knee, or ankle pain. I have noticed that a lot of martial artists are. And that really tells you that some of their techniques, especially if the entire dojo, if everyone over, let's say, 40 is having knee, back, and uh, ankle problems, something is mechanically incorrect there. And so that's one of the big things. Now I'm going to actually pause. You won't see the pause, but I'm going to go to the uh, my, my Makurari platform so I can show you certain things that are important. And Actually, I should do some of them here, I think. Nope. Now, here's a rough part. I, You're not going to be able to see me because I want you to see my feet. And that's this. There are different versions of Nihanchi, uh, either whether you do Shigodachi or Kubodachi. But if we start here, and you'll notice that with the parallel boards, my legs, my feet are parallel. If I bend my knees and I try to keep them, or my feet, my knee tends to actually rotate outward a bit. The reason is because the the way the knee joint actually works. The inside of the knee is a little bigger than the outside, so as it moves, you're going to have a slight variation. Now, you can actually bring them in a little, but you're starting to have a, you're actually changing the stance. Now, if you're going a lot farther out, you'll notice that as I come out, I really have to push out. And I am feel uh, you can feel the tension in the ankle. You can see how it's actually not moving in the right way necessarily. And you so you actually will have a variation on that. Uh, if we come here and we do this is actually the way I was taught to do it. We come out here a little bit. You'll notice that my knee does go over my toe, so it structurally become is makes sense. If you don't believe me, if you think about taking my right leg, if I come up, you'll notice that the knee tends to line up with the foot pretty well. If I'm coming in around, the angle becomes a little off. And so with this, yeah, if you're actually doing it from a relatively neutral position, it really doesn't it really doesn't seem to affect too much. As you start going out more and more, coming out will help save your knees and your uh, ankles. And so this is actually why a lot of times the Shigarachi may be a bit better. So with uh, seeing that, what we actually can see, at least in the demonstration I did, and I know that people can do it a little different, maybe can get a better uh, way, we can actually see that for longevity, support, uh, points of the foot and power, the power really doesn't matter. They're both going to be just as powerful. The support of the points of the foot, it seems that rotating out, as in Shigarachi, uh, would be a bit better than the Kibidachi straight out. And for longevity, depending on how wide you go, the uh, Shigarachi would, well, pretty much the wider you go, the more important Shigarachi versus Kibidachi would be. Uh, just because it could do damage, these things could do damage to your joints. If you're relatively neutral, it probably isn't going to be that big of a deal. But, uh, well, you can actually uh, look at this. 
Now, there was another thing that I actually mentioned earlier that should come back, come to, uh, come, that you may pay attention to. And that is when your toes are both forward and you want to move in a different direction, to move, you're really geared just to move in one direction. Both feet are aimed to go forward only. If you're rotated to the sides here, this foot is ready to shift forward here. You don't have to rotate now out here. It's just a one movement here. Your muscles are actually already ready for that. And the same thing. That's why if you actually look at short stops when they're waiting for a pit for something, you'll know, notice that a lot of them will be in a, a shigodachi like position. In basketball, sometimes you'll see that same position. And even in football, American football, you'll see people standing there. Soccer, usually people are moving too much to uh, just stand in one place. But I guess you can't see it in there. And in volleyball as well, I think. And so one of the things we do see is we see that a lot of sports outside karate are using the shigodachi for a reason. We also can see that based on the research that is done, it seems that shigodachi is a, lit, a bit safer for a lot of things, especially if you're going wide. Uh, you see a lot of uh, tournaments going wide, and that's the thing. It has to do with the lining up the knee to the foot and also check, making sure that your hips are moving at the, in the right direction. Now, I hope you enjoyed this, first of all. And I also wanted to mention that now that the vaccine is coming out, and hopefully in a few months, we'll all, anyone who wants it will be able to get it, uh, I feel that you know life will begin again without COVID. And I'm, I know that a lot of people who have martial arts studios have suffered from COVID. Doesn't you have students who you have Stop, stop coming. Some of us had to uh, close down dojos because, well, safety concerns. And I will say that I'm one of the fortunate people who has income from an outside source, uh, teaching, whatever. And so I actually would like to offer anyone who watches this, if once things are open and available, if you're interested in knowing where I would be or Actually, not where I would be. If you're interested in me visiting your dojo for some, something, if you think that I could actually help you guys in some way uh, by showing up, uh, if you let me know where your dojo is, I will make sure I call, you, I contact you uh, before I get there. And maybe we could set something up that would help you, your school out. I hope you enjoy this and have a nice day.